Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, it's episode number 13 and today we're returning with two big games with Brescia as we face struggling Udinese away and going for the title Lazio at home. Before we get to games though, shout out Brescia, we've been getting on off camera and also a big sale and a big signing to the Brescia team as well. Let's get to that first. And as you can see, it was a very busy transfer deadline day for Brescia. As you can see, we loaned out one of our strikers, Alfredo Donnarum, that's been here since the series began. Um, we've got no need for this guy now. We've got a bit of a striker overload, so we don't really play him. So I'll say Donnarum was easy to the future, so we're uh, just trying to get someone to pay his wage at the moment. Uh, we also sold another player, Cortese. Again, a striker overload here, so I was fine letting him go on the cheap as we've got no plans to use him ever. And also, uh, confirmation, discussed it very briefly in the last episode, Simon Scrab has now left us for 1.5 mil, 1.7 mil I think it was, yeah there you go, so um, there we go, we are now officially a fully Italian squad, but a big sale as you can see happened just after transfer deadline day, bye bye Balotelli, yes Mario has decided to leave Brescia, um, interestingly enough I am in his favoured personnel, I love this, like Mancini, I'm the only guy that's ever, ever been in his good books as a manager, but uh, yeah Balotelli, we decided to let him go just because he's on, I think it was on like 45 grand a week here and as we know Salcedo and Esposito are the future strike duo here at Brescia and quite frankly now 30 years old last season was our top scorer of 8 and 29 that's not terrible but five of those eight came from the penalty spot more than half his goals last season were scored from 12 yards so really Balotelli you know half his goals this season from the spot as well I just I didn't really think it was worth keeping him he had a year and a half less than his deal I decided to cash in 5.5 mil it gets rid of his pricey contract Bye bye Balotelli. I mean, I love the fact I'm in his favoured personnel. And um, yeah, fair, fair play though, man. I mean, the guy scored some big goals last season, but now it, it was best for both parties to uh, to let him go. But as for the new signing, I've got to say this is an absolute bargain. Yes, on transfer deadline day, we signed a new goalkeeper. It's Emil Ordero, formerly of Sampdoria, who we picked up for a very cheap fee of just £3.5 million. Pounds. Look at the loss Sampdoria made in just 18 months, man. £14 million loss on the guy, but it's an absolute bargain. He requested to leave, submitted a transfer request with Sampdoria. Obviously, they were relegated last year on the final day by us, so he's gone to Brescia. I'm sure the Sampdoria fans aren't too pleased by that, but... This guy's got some absolutely fantastic stats. Only 24 years old as well, just turned 24, so he has a really, really high ceiling. Potential to be a leading Serie A goalkeeper in the future, so for 3.5 mil, it's an absolute bargain. And, you know, as much as we love Marco Moller, the kid, he has been progressing really nicely. There is interest by Chelsea, by the way, we rejected a bit on deadline day for him. Frankly, you know, Ordero is just far better, and, and Moller's not there just yet, you know, so Ordero comes in. The only negative to this deal is that in the contract, the agent put in a non-exclusive minimum fee release clause for clubs in Champions League, which is 7.75 mil. So when I was doing the negotiating, I was thinking, is there any point in even signing him? Because that will get met within the space of 12 to 18 months, no doubt about it. This is a class young goalkeeper, and that is an incredibly cheap release clause there. But I thought, you know what? He's better than the option we've got right now. You know, we'll keep him for about 12 to 18 months, I'd say, and we still make a profit as well. So we won't have him for too long, this guy, due to that release clause, but better than Moller and an absolute bargain. Now, as for the run of camera, uh, of course, in the last episode, you saw our back-to-back 1-0 -back losses at home to Frozenone and away at the Stadio Olimpico against Roma in heartbreaking fashion in the Sim Cup. Uh, just the four games off camera as we played through the remainder of January and the first game in February. And as you can see, three straight losses and a draw as well in what has been the worst run of the season for Brescia. We knew it was coming at some point. We weren't going to be in this sort of form all season long. We knew at some point we'd start to struggle, and now we have. Uh, we began with a 3-1 loss away at the Stamp, uh, San Paolo uh, against Napoli in Naples, uh, Manolas heading in an early corner, Milik made it 2-0 just 6 minutes later and whilst Esposito did get I guess, back in the game from the spot, we were beaten by the better team here, Herving Lozano tapped in a cross late on as Napoli completed a very comfortable 3-1 victory and following that back-to-back -back games where we failed to score Four times in our last five games, we failed to score. We lost at home to Atalanta by a goal to nil. Illicit scoring the only goal of the game from the spot in one of the most uneventful games of FM I've ever played. And after that, a 2-0 loss away against Fiorentina, where I did change my formation and tactics for the game as well. I went to the 4-2-3-1 gegenpress system, 4-1-2-3 gegenpress system. But quite frankly, you know, I, I, I know sitting back and sitting deep can at times hamper you a lot. And playing far with the back can sometimes be seen as too negative. But I really do believe far with the back is the way to go. In this game here, changed the four at the back. We just didn't really click whatsoever. Beaten 2-0 in a very routine victory for Fiorentina. But the final game of camera was an end of the loss 
straight, uh, lost streak after five straight. 2-2 two -two home draw against Cagliari. Very impressive though we fought back in this game as well. Twice we trailed, but twice we pegged them back. Uh, Zay Luis made it 1-0 after a sloppy back pass. And then towards the end of the first half, Nicola Muru scored his first goal for the club, connecting with a De Pauli cross as the wing-backs linked up. Uh, in the second half, a bit of scrappy goal saw Cagliari get back in front. But Claudio Picardi, just three minutes later, the 17-year-old scored his third goal of the season. Lovely, delicate finish into the bottom corner as well. I must say, I've been impressed by this youth prospect. Long way to go in his career, but he's looking pretty decent in his debut year for the club. So in the Serie A, as you can see, after just one point picked up from a possible 15, the gap between us and the bottom is getting closer, even though it might not seem like it in the league table. Right now, we are in 12th place. However, the gap now between us and Udinese, who we face today, who just won their last game, is only eight points. If they win this game, the gap gets cut to five. We're in horrendous form. They're looking to break out of horrendous form. This is why today's first game is absolutely massive. 14 games to go. We might seem safe by our position, but believe me, there's a long way to go and we're far from safe. And I don't think there's anything else to show you in the runoff camera. You might be interested to see the dynamic screen now that Balotelli is gone. We only have the two, uh, two team leaders. Those are Bissoli and Savelli. Someone will take the third spot at some point. I don't know who it's going to be. I think it will be Bruno Martella. Wouldn't be against that, but I'd prefer to see Sestana become a team leader here as he's got the brighter future of the two and is five years younger. We should have to wait and see. Social groups looking like this right now. And uh, finances maybe after the sale of Balotelli and signing Ordero. 9.4 million the budget, wage bill as you can see is still extremely high. Um, yeah, let's just dive into the first game too then. Away against Udinese and an absolutely massive one here at 3pm. So hence the game, as you can see, we will stick with the Tiki Taka 5-2-1-2 on the injury report right now. Patagonia is coming back uh, from a slight knock. Marazzi is unfit. Everyone else is fully fit though and this will be our team. Ordero in goal and about five is Muri, Sistana, Perola, Armini, Depauli with Viviani and Bissoli through the middle. Picardi supports Alcedo and Esbozito up top. Eddie still just one goal all season long. So, so frustrating, man. Just can't seem to get this guy clicking right now. And uh, on the bench, you've got Mola, Magnani, Martella, Sabelli, Desena, Mazzai, Morosini, Lucignoli, Dalmonte, Rocco, Torregrossa, and Ravaglia as well. First of two, it's a massive one. Udinese away can't afford a loss here. Forza Brescia. We have got some really big games coming against some teams that are struggling right now towards the bottom of the tables. We can't afford to lose this one. And what was I just saying a moment ago? Ordero is better than Moller and he'll be a lot more reliable. Absolutely not. How do you not save that? That is shocking goalkeeping, isn't it? Come on, mate. You have got to keep that one out. It's Agent Ordero haunting us, formerly of Sampdoria, making it 1-0. That is shocking, shocking goalkeeping. And we really can't afford to lose this game, man. That'll be five defeats in six. Udinese climbing out of the drop zone, cutting the gap to five points as well. Shocking start from Brescia. Got to turn this round, but instead, it's Udinese again coming forward. Suarez in behind to Pauli, and it's should have been two. Lads, show some passion. Show some passion. Come on now, seriously. Halfway through the first half, we've done nothing. Dominated possession, but created very little. Or created nothing. And this is poor, man. Lose this game, and, and we are going to be in trouble. Is this the death of the Tiki Taka? It lasted half a season, but is it coming to its end now? Dear, oh dear. I'm, I'm going to get aggressive at half time, man. So show me something else in the second half, because that was very, very poor. We've we got to do something, man. We've got to create something. What I'll do real briefly is change the tactics, uh, mix the passing up a little bit, and play at a higher pace. Give the lads more freedom as well, creatively speaking, and send them out there with a rocket up their backside for the second half. Come on, Brescia. Let's get something going. Mark my words, this season is far from over especially if we lose this first game. We'll definitely lose against Lazio, no doubt about it. Needed at least a point in the episode opener today. Bissoli loses out the battle in the tackle. Christo uh, denied by Ordero. Was that, was that not offside? I thought for sure that was offside there, but it wasn't. And Emmy tries to make up for his earlier error with the say 1-1-1-1. One one one. Still 1-0 one down though. Can't create nothing at the moment. Take off Bissoli for Desena and swap his role to a box-to-box. -box. Get one more player further forward. Muir has played poorly and he's on a booking, so I'll bring on Martella for him. And on the bench, I do have Tori Grossa and Robert Glia, but this is where I'm going to miss Mario Balotelli. 23 minutes to go, still down by a goal here. 
We've been the kings of the late goals this season. We need another one desperately here. De Pauli, what a cross. Oh, yes. Fabio De Pauli, what a season. There's Bozzito, ninth for the year. And this is why we're not going to miss Balotelli as much as the kid is a future star. Huge goal. We have been the kings of the late goals this season. And there's the much needed level of Fabio whips it in towards the near post. As Bozzito nods home. 1-1 one, one, and I'll take it. Quickly change my mentality to positive, change the instructions down a little bit as well, and we'll just settle for the point here, which is a big one. One chance, one goal, and what a surprise, it's Sebastiano, the young wonder kid that provides it at the death. Huge, huge level of man. We needed that. We needed that. Massive point there. I'll, I'll certainly take it. Still, it has been a very poor run of four, no matter how you look at it. Yes, there's a big point there, but haven't won a game in the calendar year yet. Our last win came against Spal, I believe, yeah, on the 23rd of December. It's been almost two months without a win for Brescia. So, big point, don't get me wrong, but Lazio at home and Inter away will definitely lose those games there. We've got to pick up at least one win here in this run in March. Otherwise, with the games against Hellas Verona and Empoli and Bologna and Pescara all in the bottom half of the table, those are going to be relegation six pointers if we can't win one of these five here. I absolutely love the Paoli though, man. I really do. I mentioned it on Twitter. This guy, he does give me Jason vibes. I can't put my finger on exactly why it is, but you look at his stats this season. Six assists and four goals in just 20 games in the Serie A this year for a new club. I mean, that is an incredibly impressive start. He's not shown much in the way of progression, but he's got the resolute personality, the 16 determination, the 15 work rate as well. You know, only 23 years old too. It'll turn 24 in April, but long way to go. I I still believe this guy can be our starting right wing back for all the years we're here at Rigamonte. So moving on, second and final game is Lazio leading the way in the league going for the Serie A title. Just want to show you this real briefly on Saturday. A couple of big games there. Hellas Verona losing home to Inter Milan, so Tonali doing us a favour there. But Spal beating Frozenone in a massive battle towards the bottom of the table. That leaves Frozenone just above Udinese on the head's head record and Udinese have the game in hand as well. I think Biscara are down now. I can't see them putting a lecture and almost surviving. I think Empoli will join them as well. But that 18th place, I mean you got to say, really, anyone from Udinese to Palmer in 11th place, only nine points separating all these teams here, could still realistically go down. It's, it could certainly be us as well if we continue to lose games. So, yep, second and final game is indeed Lazio at home. Can't just getting anything from this game with the visitors five points clear at the top of the table, but let's see how we get on. So, heading to the game, as you can see, we'll stick with the tiki taka style of play with a couple of changes to our lineup. Moller comes back in in goal after all the Eldero shocker in the last game, and about five is now Martella, Sistana, Magnani, Armini, De Pauli, with Viviani and Basoli through the middle. Bacardi stays in the advanced playmaker role, but Tagna comes back in as a deep line forward up top alongside Esbozito. He and Salcedo, just two goals between them this season. So, so frustrated. I had such high hopes for both. On the bench though, Ordero, it's Perola, Muru, Sabelli, Desena, Mazzai, Morosini, Lusignoli, Dalmonte, Rocco, Salcedo, and Tori Grossa as well. Second final game, leaders, Lazio at home. Can't just get anything, but you never know. Falls of Russia. Yeah, Patagna, that's the signing I've been most disappointed with this season. For Salcedo, he's a young man. He's got a long way to go. He's got a nice link with Esposito right now. And of course, you know, at that age as well, you can't expect the guy to be too consistent uh, in his first season at a new club, even though Esposito has been. But with Patagna, I, I really thought this guy, I kept saying it, a bully. Where's the negative to this guy? He's got some amazing stats, but sadly, it's just not worked out. And I understand I am playing him in a supportive striker role. Don't get me wrong. As Empoli take a big lead there against Palmer, but he's had chances. He's had plenty of chances this season. It's just he's failed to bury any but one. Anyway, first highlight falling here as Eric Dyer intercepts Bissoli and Shiro Immobile is in behind Armini. Takes it a bit far wide, but finds Luis Alberto who drills it in and Lazio have the lead. We've conceded quite a few goals out this season. Surrendering possession, dilly-dallying on the ball, or poor back passes and being caught out on the break. And obviously one of the reasons why is because we're playing a high defensive line. And when you do that, you can often be caught out that way with quick players running in behind. So Luis Alberto with the finishing range. Lovely strikes. Well, nothing that Moller or Rodero could have done about that one. Lazio have the lead. Statistically speaking, though, we've been, we've been doing fine. Positive signs all throughout the course of this season. And, you know, we, we've got more points on the board at this stage of the season than we did for the, Europe, uh, the, uh, the entirety of last season. You know, last year we get bad in this sort of game. This year we're still in it. 
Trust the process, man. Trust the process. We are making a lot of progression and a lot of strides forward with this Brescia team. We picked up draws against Milan and Inter this year. We were so close to drawing that game against Roma in the Tim Cup as well as Martellus crosses cleared by Akabi and Lazio get it away. I've, I've been encouraged by a lot of things this season, especially our defense. It's Paoli down the right. Crossfields to Viviani. Great ball by Paoli as well as Martella now takes over. Come on, Brescia. Let's get ourselves a goal here and get back on level terms. We've done it in the last two. Why not in this one as well? Viviani, Crossfield, mate. Crossfield, look at Paoli. Look at Paoli and acres of space out wide. Acres of space, mate. Give him the ball. Okay, don't. It's Bozito. Yes, brilliant finish by Sebastiano. And we find ourselves the level. Is he offside though? Yes, he is indeed. VAR chalks it off and it's not going to count. Sebastiano has been amazing this year. I was saying, playing out wide to the Pauli instead finds his Bozito. Just offside though. Right decision. Composed finish after rounding the goalkeeper, but correctly chalked off. You know, Balotelli was our top scorer last year. Again, most had come from the spot, but he was the guy we would look to when we needed a goal. But now it's Esbozito. You know, it's Esbozito's team now, I feel, that Tonali has left us. It's all about Sebastiano. And keeping this guy here is going to be crucial for us making progression with this pressure team. Great one over the top, though, and a Mobley should have made it 2-0, but totally fluffed his lines. Well, we kept ourselves in the game. Thought we'd found a leveller, but sadly it wasn't to be. Lazio continued their crusade and their pursuit of the Serie A title. But again, statistically, look at this man. Dominated possession, had more shots, a couple off target. But either way, it's it, it's still really encouraging to see this against a side right now going for the title. Trust the process. There's been so many positives this year. We were the underdogs out there and you gave it your best. Good effort, lads. Encouraging. Encouraging. I mean, no points. And as you can see by the articles here, Patagna and Salcedo worrying Brescia with their lack of goals. Brescia make it seven without win. Doesn't sound positive or look positive, but it's 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 not been that bad, man. It, it's not been that bad. You go table right now, 12 games to go. Pescara got the game in hand, but really with seven points on the board. I can't see them dragging us into a relegation scrap. 12 games to go, eight points to gap between us and Frozen only right now. There's plenty of time to be caught up, but I think just get another couple wins on the board between now and the end of the season, and we should be fine. So that was this episode of Club and Country, guys. A big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it, and if you did, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all, and we'll return with games against. I think we've got to come back here in April, right? Hellas Verona away and Empoli away as well. A massive double header on the road to kick off April, where hopefully we've ended our un 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 uh, unwinnable run, got ourselves a three points. But if not, these will be two massive games as we look to stay clear to drop. Have a great day, guys. Much love, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country, the penultimate episode of season two, very soon.